Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. It is time for another Metal Earth kit build and this time I am bringing you one of the four from the newer Star Wars movie that's coming out or at least by the time that I'm recording this. It hasn't come out yet but it will be soon and hopefully I can get at least one of these videos on the air before it does or on YouTube before it does but if not, hey, doing what I can. But first up today is the Special Forces TIE Fighter. And I'm starting with the TIE Fighter because previously the TIE Fighter has been among the toughest. Mainly because of that center section. So I figured I would tackle this first. Hopefully I won't mess it up and have to buy a second kit. But let's tear it open and see what we got. Time to open up. What do we have inside? We have our two usual metal sheets. It looks like they may have redesigned the centerpiece. And we have just one single sheet. And we got your beginning page, if you will. It has a little outline of the ship and, and sheets. And, of course, a bit about the insertion holes and folds and tabs and such and how they work. And you've got the usual neonized pliers are helpful for assembly, and they certainly are. And a bit about how to bend and fold the tabs. The blue circle means to bend at 90 degrees. The green triangle means to twist the tabs once you've placed them through the slot. And then we have our two sheets which are color coded for matching parts which is excellent and we have all the part numbers and then we slide over and we have our we have page two and the flow sheet starting with one two three four five so on and so on and flip the other side we've got page three which I, we i'm assuming we follow straight down it looks that way and page four They've changed the way this centerpiece is done, and hopefully that's for the better. If you've ever done the previous kits, you know what I, you can see what I mean, how they've changed it. What am I going to need to do this kit? As usual, I'm going to use the kit, toolkit from Fascinations. We have the needle nose pliers, the flat nose pliers, great for bending, shaping, holding on to, and the clippers, which are probably my favorite getting parts off of the tree. I'm also going to go with some regular tweezers which I find handy for a lot of things. And I'm probably going to use these ring pliers which have rounded ends on them which are good for shaping and curving some parts. And I will likely use these forceps or hemostats or basically some clamps for holding on to small parts if the need be. They also lock shut and they're narrow which is good for getting into some areas. I also like to use a what I call a dental style pick. A very small pick. It's good for getting into narrow areas and pulling and pushing parts that are not lined up or have sunk in too far. It's also good for shaping corners and I may or may not find it useful to use some dowel rods. I'm not real sure but I have an assortment of dowel rods for making round parts. I also have some other things like paint brushes and needles. And I have one of these dowel rods that is sharpened with a pencil sharpener, which is good for, for making and shaping parts. So, let's get started. We start off this kit working, folding, and attaching tiny pieces. Because of the tabs under this part, I could not fold the sides all the way to 90 degrees with pliers.
This part is not curved round, but more of a polygon, with many flat sides. Yet it is still helpful to use a dowel rod to help bend all the sides evenly and quickly. Also, the instructions say to twist the tabs that hold this part on, but there was no room for tweezers or pliers. I opted instead to bend them over with a knife and pinch them down with pliers or clamps. and repeat for a second time for the other side with one part substitution, the antenna. The way this sitter cabin part comes together is very different than the previous TIE Fighter kits, and far easier. I am very glad they made this change, before you form the center part out of one piece and attach the side arms. This was nearly impossible to get secure. Now with it being two pieces that attach together after the side arms are on, it makes it far better connection, and far easier to do. One thing I did not anticipate needing was a marble. The top and bottom pieces of the cockpit area need to be curved a little and the marble is perfect for it. This top part, for me, was more difficult than it looked. When you have parts that are curved or bent over at odd angles, it helps to bend all the tabs facing towards the next part. This makes it much easier to line the tabs up for assembly. Bend all of the tabs straight out to fit it to the next part. One of the thruster cones flipped out of my hand and disappeared. I searched all over the table and under the floor beneath it to no avail. Oftentimes there are extra pieces of those small pieces, but not this time. I put the other one on and then found a spare part from another kit that was nearly the same and tried to make it work. There are some tabs from previous parts that may get in the way of the thrusters. Just bend them over out of the way. The gun pieces are so very tiny. To me, it helped to bend the connecting tab over slightly to line it up with the slot on the same part. Then I bent the tab over. I used pliers to hold the edge behind the tab steel while I bent the tab. The metal is so thin that it would likely bend to the wrong place, and I have had that happen before. These two pieces have a lot of repetitive folds. They are not hard, but time consuming.
In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality, I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build. I used my fingernails to bend over the tabs holding on the solar array. There is a lot of clipping to be done to get these two large pieces off. Also they are attached together at one point. Be careful not to accidentally clip the tabs while separating them. These sides are not 90 degrees. Remember to bend the tabs the rest of the way so they will line up. Now to carefully bend all the tabs over without warping the long thin metal. I find it interesting that the stand is not directly tied to the model. This is the first Star Wars kit I have seen like that. Presenting the Special Order TIE Fighter, or Special Forces, excuse me, I keep thinking New Order, Special Forces TIE Fighter. It's very similar to, in size, to the previous TIE Fighter, but it has different detailing on it. This was a fun build for me, and I miss doing the Star Wars kits. I'm looking forward to doing even more. There's quite a few out there that I haven't done now. They've released several lately and the new movie is just about out. The stand is separate which I think I mentioned in the narration. It's not not very complicated. There's some tough spots with trying to get the top and bottom here to fit properly and playing around with the curve of the, the center cockpit to get all the tabs to fit but all in all this has been one of the easier kits I've done in a while. It also just so happens that during this kit, you know, I take breaks. I don't sit and do it all in one sitting anymore. I used to do that, and it was too much. 
I'm in a position where I can leave it unattended and nobody bothers it so I can take my time which has given me the opportunity or excuse me which has allowed me to make better kits because you really have to pay attention take your time and examine everything because the instructions are not always crystal clear the parts are not off you know you can easily get a part backwards have the wrong side facing out or bend the tabs the wrong way and it's very easy to make mistakes I frequently do I try to go slow so I can catch them and so I can correct them so take your time give yourself some time to do these kits but in the midst of doing this kit during one of the breaks I went to the store and I happened to find some very small forceps or hemostats or blocking clamps whatever you want to call them they're considerably smaller than the ones I already used and they came in extremely handy for this kit because there were so many tabs inside that little cockpit that I had trouble getting to that these were perfect for so it was a blessing that I found this just by chance and picked it up and was able to use it during this build if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below any special requests and I can try and work them in thank you for watching and keep on keeping on